Hi, welcome along to my chess channel. I welcome you here and thank you for checking in here. Uh, I'm David Wiegener from New Zealand. I've played chess for a long, long time. I've purportedly played it since I was five years old. And here is this, um, here is this game that I played here earlier on. Um, and here I go for my key. So here I am actually uh, an outtake and so, but you still get to see it. Hi, I'm David Wiegener. I live in New Zealand. I have been playing chess purportedly since the age of five years old. I'm not sure about that, but purportedly that's correct. I wish to introduce you to this chess channel and I bring you this game that was played today on the March the 20th, 2024. I've been running this chess channel since nine, um, since 19, since 2016, and I've really enjoyed it so far. And I started off with thinking that I was the only person on YouTube in the whole world to do chess for free coaching. So that's quite amusing in itself. I started this chess channel on 2016 in 15th of November. I really, really enjoy editing and that sort of part of it as well. However, I do try to bring you a chess channel that is unedited, primarily, mostly, and that sort of thing. I keep my P's and Q's to myself. I try to keep my P's and Q's, in other words. And um, yeah, so that's what I try to do. And I keep my P's and my Q's to myself and I try to bring a clean channel where I don't swear. Sometimes if I'm going live, I might le leap out a little bit of a yelp and that sort of thing. That's chess. Here I wish to show you this game that I've played today on the 20th of March as my rating is 1883 only in King of the Hill. King of the Hill is these four squares here. How do I show you that? This, this square, I can't show you it. I want to show you it. But anyway, I won't edit that out. King of the Hill is to get your king into the central squares here, okay? So that's the objective. And the subjective is not to get checkmated instead. Um, so whoever's king gets to the center squares first safely is the victor okay so whoever gets there there oh, i can show you it okay there you go there's my mouse i these are the four squares of course of the center and these are your objective is to get your king into one of these squares safely so however, I am playing someone that's rated 2152 for this format of chess or this, um, yeah, format, I'll just call it. Uh, this was played 49 minutes ago. It's three minutes and two second increments, which means every time I'm just going to, I've been drinking. I love coffee, by the way. I love coffee. I love chess. And there you go. That's my first. I'm not going to edit that out. I might, but um, I won't. <laughs> so here is a three and two minute rated game and three minutes and two second increments. So you get three minutes all together and two second increments. This game was played 49 minutes ago. And my opponent is 2152. I'm only 1883 provisional. So this is King of the Hill. And this opponent of mine has quite a, a big rating for normal chess. I noticed that my player opponent was playing very, very good chess. Apart from 
trying to get our kings to the center of the board. It's uh, my opponent is 2429 currently for bullet chess, 2456 for blitz, 2408 for rapid, classical is 2324. My performance in this tournament was 2652. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing even if it's just normal classical chess. So I want to see what my opponent, um, whether or not, I want to just see, if you bear with me please, with, um, I want to see my profile, King of the Hill, what my best game is so far. My best win is today, March 20th. So I'm here at my profile and here I see that this is the highest rated victory I've had for King of the Hill thus far. My opponent is from Israel, so thank you very much to my opponent. So finally, here is our game. And I hope you enjoy this game, and I hope you enjoy this chess channel. I come here with a mixture of things, sometimes I don't always bring topical chess things, but that's the nature of who I am and how I've been, how I was brought up. So, I don't always bring you chess. Uh, but I do clearly mark that. You get a clean channel for me. Uh, you won't get me swearing and carrying on like that. I'm not into that sort of entertaining. And I do not um, ask at this stage, I do not ask for likes and dislikes and all that sort of thing. But if you do like my chess channel, then I would appreciate if you show me that. And if you don't dis if you do dislike my chess channel or any content of it, then I would love for you to let me know all about it in your comments to me. Thank you, that'd be great. Anyway, here is this game, as I keep promising, and here it is here. Oh, I like to keep you hanging on. No, I don't. Of course I don't. So anyway, I even like to sing. <laughs> That's what I call it. Some people don't think it's singing. So anyway, here we go. So all I have to do is get my king into the center. That's pretty easy. I can just about do that now. Why don't I just play d6 and king d7 and king c6 and king d5? Because usually white will stop me going to one of those central squares, the four squares. So c4. So I try to play a little bit normally, whatever I call it. So my opponent's just really wanting to bust open the whole position so that all those squares in the center are left open, you see? So um, f5, yeah, this is very, very naughty. Um, this is not my own move, but um, I did used to call it my own move. Not really. So the beauty with this is, is white gets a lovely station for their knight and pieces on e5 square. Okay, e5 square. And I get places for my knight and pawn on e4 only. That's sort of thing. So my rating's 1883 and I got a whopping 111 points I've just noticed for this win. I'm sorry to say that I won this because I would prefer not to say I won it, but a little bit like Eric Rosen was um, spoken to by Magnus Carlsen, that you only put the highlights on. Yes, I think I do. But I try to put losses on too, but keep them very quick. Now, this is a wee bit of an annoying move, but. Um, I just want to point out one thing. Noticed, notice this, the king has got quick access than white to one of these squares. So the king has got quick access to one of these squares. However, white 
hasn't with their pawn on f2. Hasn't got it so quickly. So that's something I was thinking about. I thought there's an advantage in King of the Hill to play f5 because when you castle, you don't have to move f pawn later on. And then you've got a quicker access to the square here or there to win the game. And that's all you have to do. It's very, very simple, but I only played one game today and it just happened to be against this player. And I just thought, what? When I saw the person's rating, I thought, what? What am I doing playing this person? How come, you know, it's just the first game and it started, it started, um, I have to do an outtake for that anyway, don't I? So with move queen b3, my b7 pawn is an issue for me, and but I'm not trying to think about normal chess here, uh, although I look like I'm trying to play it. I'm thinking about getting my king to the central squares, which these squares here, about getting my king there primarily. But I have to play sort of normal chess here, uh, because no one can place their king on either one of these four squares. No one can place their king there at the moment because everything is attacked by something or another. Okay, so I play, uh, what did I play? Knight c6 and rook a d1. Okay, that's fair enough because I was threatening to just take d4 pawn. Knight a5. Now I protect my b7 pawn and White says, well, I'm going to hang around b6. This is getting a little bit sort of like, mm, I have to keep defending, defending, defending. Oh, no. Now, if my, if this was a check, if my king was on f6 and this was a check, then I can win pretty quickly a piece as Queen takes bishop, queen sacrifice, d e5 and king e5 would be making me the victor. But that's not the case, so I can't play it. Knight c4. But I can soften the square up by capturing this bishop on e5. But it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So normally I'd probably want to play knight e5, but I didn't. Now I do. Now I play knight e5 and queen takes. Because I'm now sitting there going, one square is free for my king. So if I want to just be quite basic about it, I just have to move my queen to capture this pawn and move my king up to e5 to be the victor okay whereas white still um one two or one two three four i'm one two three away see or one one two three away or one one, two, three away. That's the thing. So that's the beauty of this game, is you don't have to play necessarily for this variant of chess. You don't have to play necessarily excellent chess, but I am, you know, or really good chess. You just have to get your king there, okay? It's as simple as that. So if we can get away with all the king maneuvers up there, then we can win. So next, Half of this game is I've won a pawn. Um, it's no good if I have to give it up straight away. Bishop c5. My only threat in the whole game. And here, white could lift everything on e4 with bishop e4 and rook e4. As my pawn is still pinned to the defense of my king on g8. Which is where my king is, of course. So here, I think my opponent missed that. 
Oh no, my opponent didn't. Oh, my opponent did. My opponent can just play rookie four now. And uh, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm still thinking about getting my king to the central squares here or here primarily. So I think my opponent drops the ball here. I think my opponent drops the ball here and but plays rook d5 instead. So this is now clearing both squares. It's taking um, defences of d5 away from uh, and I might even be losing here. So I play all I'm thinking about is I have to survive and all I have to do is get my king to e5 or d5 safely and I've won. So I play rook d5 and knight d5 that's a bit cheeky and so I move my king away from discovery check which could be quite sad for me. I play king e7 I mean I uh, so I play king f8 on move 25 and here my opponent plays knight e3 and so I just think well I'll take that because obviously you cannot play rook e3 as rook c1 and I start winning your king in normal chess queen e3 well it's better than the other one and now I just think I want to get my king to the central squares and I'm only three squares away from one winning square. So I go king e7, f4, and I cannot capture. Now, it's your move. It's your move in king of the hill move. It's your move now. My opponent might have forgotten that they're actually playing king of the hill and just threatened my queen. So it's your move now, so that's a big clue. What's your next move? And either or, or you know, king d6 or king e6 is a clue is possible, okay? And I played king e6 because of course, if now white plays f e5, yay, won your queen, ha ha ha! Then I win with king e5 or king d5. So I've got an option here, so it's very difficult for black to lose this now. Queen b3, and I play queen d5. Now comes the move, rook e4, which is fair enough. However, I now go king d6. And here is my opponent's mistake. Um... He now plays the big mistake, and what is that? Playing normal chess, rook e5. Check. Now I could probably uh, win this for white. Uh, for I could probably win this for black. Uh, just the normal chess now by playing um, rook c1 check, and that sort of thing. I played something better which made my opponent resign and I hope you can find it and it's all it is is to get my king to the central squares so what did I do? I went queen takes rock and here my opponent 2152 resigned now I'm going to show you my highest blitz rating um, which this is my highest King of the Hill, K-O-T-H. I always wonder, what does Koth mean? K-O-T-H, what does that mean? Oh, King of the Hill. Uh, so now I'm going to show you my best win for Blitz um, chess thus far since I've started here on leadchess.org. And this was on the weekend, just uh, on the 17th or the 16th of March 2024. And my opponent is a FIDE master and he is playing in, in, and my opponent is a FIDE master and he is playing in berserk mode. And I have told him that I'm going to bring this game to this chess channel. And I might get to bring his first win against me 
in the same tournament that I played in that he actually got first. But I was lucky enough to beat him and he was streaming at the same time and I have told him that I'm going to bring this to this chess channel. But to be fair, first of all, I have to say that he was in berserk mode, which means he had half of his three minutes to play all his moves and I had my whole three minutes. And that happens if you play three and two second increments and that sort of thing. You just get half your time and you don't get any increments and that sort of thing. You just go baseline uh, time limit one and a half minutes instead of three minutes plus two second increments. So here in this position my opponent resigned and now I bring you now I will bring you now I will bring you that game and I will also bring you my loss with that player earlier on in that tournament. So the score is I think um, he has three points and I have one point. So here we go. So here is the start of this position. Uh, this is the most difficult position on the board to uh, figure out what to do next. It's true. It's the most difficult position. My opponent is a whopping 2663 in Blitz Chess. My opponent after this game is at 3 out of 4 after this game. My opponent is playing Berserk mode. See over here you might be able to see that it's a little bit small. Here is the uh, Berserk mode symbol. I'll just say that and uh, that denotes that uh, this opponent or this player is playing berserk mode. However I am not playing berserk mode because I'm a little bit more sensible and but he came up as number one and he won this tournament and I think uh, he's a very nice guy uh, even though um, he got beaten by me he he wasn't um, anti he loves chess, he streams on chess, his name, he streams on Twitch and pop, and I think YouTube and that sort of thing. And he has beaten me three games. And he's, uh, I see, if you go to see his uh, profile, he's there playing my hero from uh, YouTube, one of my chess heroes from YouTube. One I really love watching, I won't say who, because that's easier to find out. And um, this, uh, what else do I want to say? Yes, that's right. He does actually sing and he plays the piano or the keyboard and he does it fantastically well. So if you want to go and have a look at him, he's fantastic. I just found him really, 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 really good to watch. And I thought, wow, he's probably a better singer than me. <laughs> definitely a better keyboard player than me because I can just play sort of like chopsticks maybe. Anyway so here was this game and I was very very pleased um, but I know that this player is a FIDE master and wishing to be a grandmaster and I wouldn't be surprised if he soon is. So here we go this is this game without further ado I hope you like this game and here it is here now. So this is three minute plus zero increments rated blitz tournament. And this is the Eastern Super Blitz Arena. And it was played two days ago. So he said something about when I watched a stream He's trying to um, get this um, gambit. I don't even know what it's called. What he said. And uh, he also said that he had a one position uh, soon. He said his position was one. But I don't, I, I can't see how that is because I don't see it like a day master. So there you go, there's the truth. 
I, I feel I've got a wee bit of a pull on the position as well, but um, I can still see what he's saying a little bit. I need a little bit. Here I went here and he said, oh, he said, oh, he's very materialistic. And he said, oh, okay, you can have the pawn. But he went rook d6. And, I, and then I said, and he said, he's quite tired. This didn't actually count for the tournament because the tournament was already over. This didn't actually count for the tournament, but as the tournament was almost over. But when he um, played, when I played bishop c5 instead of bishop a5, he said, oh, I didn't even see that. So to be fair, he was um, quite tired at the stage and he's already won the tournament. So there's nothing really, according to Conrad Lorenz, for him to be um, going for because he's already done it. It's like, as soon as the world chess champion becomes the world chess champion, is there any reason to keep on becoming the world chess champion when you've already been the world chess champion? I mean, I, I sort of think about that with Bobby Fischer. That's my viewpoint, is that once he was the world chess champion, does he need to keep on proving it? Some people would say yes, and some people would say, like me, no. You don't need to because you've already reached the pinnacle of the world chess arena sort of so to speak so here's rook d2 off a queen swap because that's going to be advantage uh white uh as i'm already now i come into this because just remember i've already been beaten three times by this player And here he says, I think he says now he's in a lost position. After this move, I think. Queen d6, oh, this move, queen d7. And here he's in the lost position now, of course. So, and then I play f6, which is. Pretty horrible, but feeble as well. I'm threatening Queen H7 checkmate. So he went uh, King G8, which, yeah, there's not much happening here. And so my final move and my final blow and his time foul, uh, which, as I've said already, uh, my opponent has won this tournament uh, very cleanly. And uh, with this next move, his time in berserk mode ran out with f7 check and of course white has some opportunities to play all sorts of moves after this uh, including rook d8 after queen f7 if queen f7 or if king h8 then queen h7 checkmate so the reason i bring this sort of game is that these games do not happen very often i mean I can beat a grandmaster here and there, but generally speaking, I lose 99.9% .9 of those games with those people. So that's the reason why this game is an in introduction to this chess channel. And um, I think it's I think it's probably okay to make it a long one. And so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to now bring you my loss for the same tournament in this tournament I'm going to bring the loss with this opponent where I'm actually black so here we start here now uh, even though I've started already my opponent actually only got naught points for this and I lost a point and I? I lost a point for this fair enough I lost one rating point Fide Master Grandmaster G Gowry or um, I'm sorry if I mispronounce that uh, I ended up on uh, 23 seconds and my opponent left with 30 seconds left on their clock in berserk mode no my opponent is not in berserk mode so I was incorrect there my opponent two days ago was not in berserk mode was in normal three minutes so a little bit harder for me here uh, as you would appreciate There's already 2-0 up.
I think the um, I think the engine said to me later on that F4 is the move here for white, for black, for white, for black. I used to get that all the time wrong. You wouldn't expect that, would you? But I do. Uh, I get it wrong all the time. But this is all about um, King of the Hill, Dad. Um, so B3. Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, okay. Well, I know it's going to play C4 and that sort of thing. And I think my opponent's got a very good uh, hold on this position. But I, th I think I've got some chances. I'll play this. I think the computer gives us as a blunder. Blunderbuss. So rookie five. Probably knight of six or something. Like knight g4, I don't know. I don't even know. I'm not sure if I know. And will I ever know? F4. Hmm. Okay. So we'll um, go through these moves reasonably quickly for some reason or another. Uh, I'm trying to make holes in White's position and here I think the computer gives this move now. Uh, when I looked at the analysis, it gives Queen D3 as the move best. Uh, whether it's any good or not is another question, but um, it gives this move here Queen d3. However, I played queen f5. So my only hope is uh, some checks and things like that um, to annoy white and win on time. I'm not going to be able to do anything else. So here, um, can I just play? No, oh, I've got my back rank issues with queen f2 and if I want to go... If I want to go queen d4 here and threaten rook e5, it's no real good because after queen f2 for white in response to queen d4 uh, and rook e5 for me, uh, queen f8 is checkmate. So here uh, I went bishop c6 for some reason. I'm not actually sure. I'm wasting time here. Probably um, Queen D4 is the best. Might be, I'm not sure. Uh, definitely after Queen D2, Queen D4 was better. So I'll go back to the uh, back to the same old place again. And I'm hoping for a draw. Queen H2, Queen G4. So E6, this is a new variation. It's never been played before. And what do I do? There's nothing new under the sun. And what do I do? I'm actually saying something I've read from Chess for, um, Chess for Tigers. No, How to Cheat at Chess from William Hartston. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun here. Um, I'm actually um, in blabber mode. It's not terrible. I don't think it's terrible because I can always defend my back rank with h6 and that's something. Even though white's going to get an exchange of queens if I've got my queen on e6 with queen f5 check and queen f5 or f5 takes. So I think rook e6 is quite good for me, or it's okay for me, but I think that it's going to eventually end up in a lost position for me, especially after rook e6, rook e6, queen e6, queen f2, threat, queen f8, check, and then h6, queen f8, king h7, queen f5, check, queen f5, rook f5, with a one position for white. The rook can go back to f2 for the meantime, play the pawns to dark squares for white, and uh, very soon, eventually, this is a lost game for black. Which is a bit hard for me to say, but I did lose it anyway, so what's the problem? Queen d4 threatens, of course, rook e6, but it's a little bit too late now. This is um, quite a hard move to meet. Uh, not only is it defended on e7, but it now threatens queen f8 check. 
and uh, some other things too. Sort of defend, it sort of threatens, um, it sort of threatens um, all sorts, ah, oh, threatens all sorts of horrible things. Uh, namely, what does it threaten? So I've still got, yeah, the, so E7 threatens all sorts of things. And it also says, your rook is tied up on E8 forever. I'm not sure what the position is like for black. Um, but I know that white is playing very well. I cannot now play king h7. I'd like to. It's queen f5, check. And then it's home and hosed. Especially after rook f8 later on. So my position's lost. You know, the computer's would show that this position's lost, but I make sure I lose it even quicker than the computer would play. I lose this. King h7, okay. So here, I think that queen c c2 is okay, but I think just queen f5 check and the game's over. Queen c2, rook here, ouch. Oh, this is not nice. This is probably even worse than what I just said and like I don't know how much time I've got left here to make my moves but it wasn't much <laughs> can I defend this can I defend this position so white's Two pawns up. Or, yeah, two pawns up uh, if we just look at it really basically. Can white improve their position to the point of um, What's the way that white can win this if I play really, really sensible? If I was to turn the computer on and play the moves for black with the computer help, which is something I never do in over the board or online, uh, but that's just my word for it. And of course, white is threatening sort of queen f8 check, but I don't capture. So at the moment, I've got a sort of a fortress but how long can that fortress last for? If we're white, if we're white, what are we going to do? How are we going to win this um, beyond doubt? I think that what, yeah, I've just come up with this one, is I'm going to march my pawn here and try to get it to g6 and then play queen f8 check. And thereby that would be a win. So that's sort of a way, and we're actually looking at it from the winning point of view, White's point of view, not mine. Um, so I'll keep it on there for the remainder of these moves. And I'll just see if I can find the real dumb move that I played here. But I think that that's what White's plan would be. Um, or to march a king up to um, g6 but that doesn't stay there long after my bishop check and bishop back to c6 the g4 there you go oh that's wonderful isn't it <laughs> so that's the end of that game and i'm thinking i'm wondering if there's anything else to bring to this chess channel but so i'd like to sing out to this player here okay I'd like to sing out to uh, this player is called Grandmaster Gowry I hope I've got that right I am going to share this with him because I'm saying something for, from him that uh, he's also on YouTube he's got his um, his how can I share that with you 
uh, I can share that by turning everything else off. Hey, I think. Oh no, I can't. So he's. Uh, if you look at his profile, that's his profile name, and you will really like to watch him. I think he's really, really good. So I'm singing out to him, even though I'm not going to actually sing. I'm going to sing out to him about how good he is. Um, he's played 10 games in classical. So he must like um, speed chess and rapid chess. So I really like him for some reason or another. Uh, but he's also a patron. So I, I, I wish to sing out to him and say what a great um, channel he is and what a great player he is. He's played 196 symbols. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I think that's amazing. So well done to him. And he's a real classy player. That's why I've got him on here. His USCF, his United States um, rating is 2454. Four. Wow, that's pretty high. Okay, that's me. I hope you enjoy this channel and let me know if there's anything that you like for me better or more and less of as well. That's the nature of things but you know I'm the one who's running this chess channel and it's not mine, it's not owned by me as you might like to see about in my about comment on this chess channel. So I thank you very much for if you're still here watching this video I really really appreciate it and I hope you enjoy this chess channel and I hope that there's a few things that I like to say is I hope primarily that you enjoy this chess channel or that you enjoy chess and try to enjoy chess no matter what I know it's very easy for me to say that but that's what I believe and there's five respects that I have for chess players Anyone, doesn't matter how good you are, whether you're as good as this FIDE master or not, the five respects are, other than primarily try to enjoy the game of chess. One, respect your opponent. Two, respect your opponent's pawns and pieces. Three, respect yourself or respect your pawns and pieces and the prowess of them. Five, respect the game of chess. And then I think, your game will improve one way or the other. Uh, even if you're a grandmaster or a fide master, I think those principles will help you at the game of chess. So that's my input. And I thank you again very much for watching me till this end. If you um, like what I've got to say, please let me know in the like comments, but I don't usually say that. And if you don't like it, as the Australian drain, drain, um, un, you know, unblocker says, let me know, just blat it out in the comments. Just tell me how bad I am in this, um, okay. <clears throat>